It's 7 o'clock, Wednesday night. Time to begin our midweek service. Uh, trust you've joined in with us tonight. You're ready to worship the Lord. Pray that you will tonight. Uh, this will be the last service that we'll be streaming live from home. If everything goes well, we'll be back in church Sunday morning. We're looking to see you there. We wish everybody that could come, would come, was able to come, would come, and just see what the Lord will do for us Sunday when we gather there in his house. Amen. Uh, the 23rd, that's our coming back for the second time. We took, uh, we took some time out. We went back and felt like we needed to go back out for just a little while. We hadn't quit working for the Lord. We've been coming to you every time, right on time. But if you've been thinking about coming to Souls Harbor, Sunday would be a good day in Gastonia, amen. And if Gastonia is not convenient for you, we have one in Dallas, Brother Eric Quinn and his wife Arlene labor for the Lord there. Have one in Mooresboro, and Brother Chuck Poole and his wife Joyce labor for the Lord there. Again, Betty and I love to see you at Gaston Church Sunday. Make plans to be with us right now, amen. Uh, we welcome you live streaming, and those that are here in the home with us, we're glad to have you all tonight. Pray for the TV program, it comes on Saturday night. Uh, we'll be preaching Saturday night, and then the next one, we'll have four this month, because it's five Saturday night. Uh, the next one, uh, we have several people from the church, about four different songs being sung on that one. I know there's some of you like the singing, and we appreciate you listening, amen. Pray that you'll be blessed tonight, the singing and the preaching. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. Keep praying for the church, keep praying for all three churches, the TV ministry, every avenue of, of Souls Harbor, we pray that God will touch and bless. Uh, Shirley Wilson, Charles Clark, both of them real sick, David Brooks, Colleen Woody, Dee Dee Woody, Kay Eason, and her brother Jerry. I uh, found out today he's real sick. Uh, and uh, her granddaughter, Kaylee, pray for her, for AC Wells. Uh, for Chad Bridges and for his mom, for Vernon and Debbie West, for Wayne and Kay Coda, and for Jeff and Linda Randall from our Mooresboro Church. We've been praying for them that God would richly touch them. Keep praying for Kat Wilson. She needs a complete healing in her body. Pray for Nettie Tig. She's doing better. We're looking to see them back at church when we get to go back. Amen. And God will completely touch her as well. Steve Fuel, the same thing. God's been blessing him, giving him good report. We pray for his complete healing. Pray for my sisters, Louise, Betty, Geraldine, and Marcella, and their husbands and their families, that God would touch them. Amen. Uh, dedicate the song that I'm going to sing tonight to them if they're listening tonight. Amen. Any of them that's listening. I uh, want to pray for uh, Gail and Tommy. Also for... Uh, uh, Gail's dad has been sick, had a real rough day Saturday. I think he has good days and bad days. I uh, got a birthday coming up real soon, and we just pray and pray him to be blessed this year, turning 89 this year, amen. So if somebody was watching this, would let him see it. It'll be recorded so you can go back and watch it again. Tell Brother Foster I said happy birthday, amen. And we love him very much, amen. Pray for Logan Fletcher, that God would touch him. Pray for Cheryl Wright, getting better, has been sick, that God would touch her. Harvey Manners and his wife Rhonda, pray for both of them. My son-in-law, Brian McKelvin, we're praying for him. He's been sick last week and this week. Uh, pray for all the prayer line requests. There's many on there. We need to pray over them. We'll leave God for them. Uh, pray for God's protection over his people. Uh, during the duration, I will say the duration because I think we're going to get through it, amen, of COVID-19, amen. And uh, pray for all the things coming up. Pray for the election. Be sure to vote and pray about your vote, amen. Don't just sign something. Pray about who God would have you to vote for and be part of that. Uh, exercise your right to vote, amen, and pray about the elections. Pray for Ronnie Simmons' family and all the Reed families in prayer that God would touch them. Let's pray together and welcome him. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Son of God, thou art welcome in this place. Heavenly Father, thou art welcome in this place. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for touching us tonight as we pray together and open this service, Lord. Believe that you're going to touch our hearts and lives. Everything's going to be well, Lord. We thank you for it for these host of people that are sick tonight. 
that we've already mentioned, pray that they're all well. In Jesus' name we pray. We just love you tonight with all our heart, Lord, and we commit this service to you tonight for your glory and the good of the people that's listening that need a touch tonight. And we'll thank you for it all, and we'll give you all the praise and all the glory for everything that's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Streaming with us tonight, text in. Let us know you're listening. We're so glad to see your name pop up at the end of the service and see that you've been with us tonight. We thank you for listening. And if you would, text in your prayer request. Donnie's got the paper and pen there ready to write those down when you text them in tonight. And we'll pray over them tonight. I want you to pray for us as we sing a song for you tonight. Sister Chambers is going to join me, and we're going to do the best we can on this song tonight. And we pray this is a blessing to you. It blesses me when I sing it, and I think about how that if we didn't have the blood, we'd be in trouble. It's just the blood. Nothing added to it. We don't, it's not a work salvation, not a work so that any man should boast. It is a gift of God that God gave his only begotten son, died on a cross that you might be saved, and that whosoever would call on the name of the Lord can be saved. And, uh, you know, uh, there's things that we do in the church, feet washing and communion, and, and I believe in baptism, but I believe it's the blood that saves us. And what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Worship with us if you know this song.
song that doesn't let me tell you about the blood of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, it's not by mind or by power, it's by my spirit. And that spirit was the spirit of the Lamb of God, that man of Galilee that, that, that came to set you free tonight. If you're bound, if you're in trouble, if your family's falling apart, your job's falling apart, your life's falling apart, I know somebody can put you back together again. Humpty Dumpty and all the king's horses and all the king's men can't do it. But I know a man named Jesus. And, and uh, one songwriter just simply said, I know a man that can. If we can't, then definitely for sure we know somebody that can. And his name is Jesus. And we'll call on him for you tonight. So be sure to get your prayer request in that we can uh, pray over your needs tonight. Just believe that God's going to touch you uh, at the end of the service tonight. Believe that he'll touch you. Uh, same blood. Amen. Touch you tonight. Set you free. Amen. Amen. Worship with Donnie. He's going to come sing you a song tonight. You always like to listen to Donnie. So just worship with him tonight. Sing one of my favorites. Amen. <laughs> something we're saving. Had a plan that uh, we didn't even think we fit in, but we did <clears throat> in the <clears throat> mighty plan of God. Amen. I want you to worship with us tonight as we go to the Word of God. We're pre preaching tonight and using the text found in 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 11, 12, and 13. Three verses of scripture tonight. So you just worship with us as we read the scripture. And he said, go for it uh, and Stand upon the mount before the Lord, just with God talking to Elijah. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountain, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake of fire, 
but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so. When Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Amen. Uh, we could go two or three different ways with this, and we may try to not scatter it, but, but try to hit on several points with this scripture tonight. But I want to preach to you on the subject just simply listening to the right voice. Amen. The Bible tells us that we need to do that. Psalms 1 says, uh, Walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Sometimes we just flat out listen to the wrong voice and we're not at the right place to hear the right voice. Amen. God wants to speak to you tonight. Let him speak to you. I believe that if you listen tonight, he'll speak to you from his pages of his book, from the word of God tonight. As we pray, Father, bless this message tonight. Help us to preach this as you give it to me. Listen to the right voice, Lord. He's the only voice that makes a difference. He's the only voice that I'll follow day by day. And I pray that you'll help us, Lord, to know that voice and listen to you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Amen. If he tells us many times to hearken unto the voice of the Lord in the seven addresses to the seven churches of Asia Minor, at the end of every address, he said, He that have ears, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So that's important tonight. I think God's question to Elijah in verse 13 was simply, What doest thou hear? And I think that question just simply meant, uh, paraphrasing just a little bit, how did we ever get so far from God that we had to hunt for his voice? Amen. I'm telling you, when he said, my sheep know my voice, a stranger they will not follow, how did we ever get so far away from God? I, I, I think often about the story of Eli when he was uh, airing the light had went out in the temple of God and he was about to go to sleep and a young man named Samuel was with him and uh, three times he came running into Eli and said, what do you want with me? You called me again. And after the fourth time, I believe it was, don't have it in front of me, but I believe that's right. The third, I believe it was the fourth time that it took this man of God who knew the voice of God, who God talked to. You remember when uh, Hannah was grieving over not being able to bear children and her face, her countenance changed. Eli went to her and told her that... Uh, uh, you're going to have to stay off the drinking. You know, you, you're, you're talking and I'm not hearing nothing. There ain't nothing coming out. And uh, she told him, said, I've not been drinking. I'm not uh, drinking. I'm not on alcohol tonight. I have been pouring out my heart and soul to God. And he was so close to God that he just spoke immediately to her and told her uh, in the season of life, when nine months had passed, you will have a child. Amen. God is going to uh, touch your barren womb and you're going to produce a child and God will use him. Amen. And you know the story. Amen. But I think we need to ask ourselves the question and really pose it as, as it's coming from God. How in the world did we ever get so far away from God that we have to hunt for his voice? Last week I was praying at a red light, amen. I was real conscious of what was going on, and uh, I, I wasn't out of my mind, but I, I had a spirit of prayer on me, and I was talking to God, just sitting at the red light, waiting for it to change, not doing anything, but just talking to God and looking at that red light, waiting on it to change. And while I was there, I'm telling you, at a red light, God spoke to me in a way that he never had, and he gave me some assurance that what I've been praying for, I was getting there, amen. I, I told God I didn't think it was there, amen. I set a goal in the first of the year, and I didn't think it was there. And I can't tell you all of what God said now, maybe later, uh, but God just spoke to me in a way that it was not audible 
but it was unmistakable. I knew that it was God. I knew that God had spoke to me at that red light. Let's look back at this story that we're in tonight. Faced with the threat of death here, Elijah, this man of God, uh, appeared to me as he lost faith in God in the, in the fact that God cared for him. And he lost sight of God's power. Amen. Can that happen to us? And what can Elijah's spirit or experience teach us about our faith that we're not as settled in it as we ought to be. We're not as firm in the Lord as we ought to be. Even though we've done great things as Elijah did, uh, you know, maybe we've never topped the mountain he topped, but we've had a red light, had God speak to me. So I know I've been with God. I know his voice. And he told us that his sheep, which we are, we are sheep of his field. It's not us that made us, not we ourselves. But it's him that created us, and we're the sheep of his pasture. Amen. And when he speaks, we know his voice. Amen. I understand that when the shepherd would call the sheep in at night uh, in the Middle East, when they had so many sheep, and it was popular shepherds and was popular trade, and and uh, said when uh, he would bring them in at night, he would just touch the top of their head and speak to them as they went in one by one. I feel like he t still does that. He touches our head and speaks to us to let us know that he's real. Today in the scriptures, uh, tonight we've been introduced to a man who was a great man of faith in the Bible according to the word of God. He performed miracles such as bringing the dead back to life. He ascended into heaven in a fiery chariot when his work was finished. And uh, today, this the Jews speak of him as the most revered, of the most prominent prophet of the Old Testament era. But he was also a man who struggled with the idea that God cared for him and that he went from a great and strong wind that crushed rocks to an earthquake, to a fire, to a still small voice before he finally heard the voice of God. Amen. Just days before the part we read tonight, Elijah had preached one of the greatest sermons of his life. He had confronted 400 prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, and he exposed them as false prophets that they were. And because of Elijah's faith and his obedience to God, God sent fire down from heaven to consume the sacrifice Elijah had placed on the altar. You know the story well. Then a few hours later, God sent a downpour of rain on a land that hadn't had any rain in three, three and a half years because God brought judgment on the land of Israel and upon the evil king and queen who had ruled it. Now, those were exciting days for Elijah, but not everybody was pleased by what Elijah did that day on the mount. One of the most uh, people, one of the people who was most upset was Queen Jezebel. Uh, she was furious. Elijah had embarrassed her, and of course he had also killed uh, her favorite hand-picked pagan priest that she had that day. Uh, and so she sent out for blood, Elijah's blood. And this is what Elijah was facing. And, and I, I mean, we all brag about, uh, Betty and I were listening to the song last night, and listen to the words that, uh, you know, we talk of faith when we're up on the mountain, but when things change and we're down in the valley, that's when the faith is put to a test, when the devil makes his mark, makes you his mark, amen, as he did this great man of God. She sends a message to him that essentially just said, by this time tomorrow, you're going to be dead like the rest of them. I've killed them all. You're the only one left. And the more your number is going to be called. And everybody knows that Jezebel was good for uh, that threat because she killed a lot of prophets of God before this happened. Uh, so Elijah runs away. He runs away like a dog with his tail tucked between his legs, forgetting that God was there with him, forgetting what God had done for him, forgetting how God had delivered him on Mount Carmel. He runs and he runs and runs until he's so exhausted that he just collapses under a juniper tree. 
and he just lies there so embarrassed by his cowardness and him running that he just wanted to die. I just wish I could die. I wish I could just get out of this tonight. I'm not happy with the things the way they are. The way they are. Elijah, this uh, great man of faith, this man of miracles and great deeds, lost his childlike faith that God cared for him, that God would take care of him even though the storm was raging that the anchor could still hold. In the book of James, we're told that Elijah was a man just like us. He was just like you, and he was just like me. Now, granted, he did things you and I only have dreamed of doing, uh, the miracles, raising the dead, and so forth. But he was still governed by the same kind of passion and emotion as we are. And that's something I think God wants us to remember. You see, God could have just told us the cool stuff Elijah did in his lifetime, the miracles, the battles he waged, the prayers that God answered for him. But God also seemed fit to include the story of this great man becoming so afraid that he ran for his life. You hear the word of God tonight. But one of the reasons God included this part of Elijah's story in the Bible is because we need to realize that God cared for him then just as much as he did when he was on the mountain and he cared for him just as much as he cares for us. Notice what uh, God does first to Elijah. Elijah lay down and slept under a juniper tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. He looked and behold, there was in his head a cake baked on hot stone and a jar of water. And he ate and he drank and he lay down again. And again, the angel of the Lord came to him a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. Then Elijah, think about this, Elijah had lost his faith, and he's very verbal about the idea that he doesn't think God cares about him anymore, and uh, that God hasn't lived up seemingly to his part of the bargain, and I'll just die. Just let me out. Just slay me right here, and I'll just die. Some might think God would be upset that and of that and had to tell Elijah what's wrong with you where's your faith get up on your feet and act like a man is that what God did no instead uh, God sends an angel to make sure he's uh, had the food and drink and then he lets Elijah sleep some more the angel returns a second time to feed him what's going on here why would God just step back and do nothing why didn't God uh, you know, just try to reason with Elijah and give him a lesson on faith. He needed one, seemingly. We do sometimes when we fret about how we're going to make it through, what tomorrow is going to bring. Uh, where's this COVID-19 thing going to end up? Uh, what's going to be tomorrow? Uh, when we worry like that, we use a lesson on faith that to know that my God is taking care of us, that there's something on the inside got a hold of the rain. And that sometime in our lifetime, we've heard that voice. And that voice ought to keep us going through troubled times. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Why I just let him sleep? Well, God did that because at the time, that was what Elijah needed. Uh, there's times when we don't need answers. There's times we don't need theology. There's times we don't need no explanation. And, uh, you know, uh, explanations sometimes are worse than worthless and when somebody tells us why everything's going on in our life they don't know what they're talking about most of the time amen sometimes what we need is to back off and get a rest the bible said jesus took the disciples aside because they had no leisure time and commanded them to rest as i looked at this passage it seemed like elijah ran because he panicked so I began to think about what panic means. And I believe there's people today that are that suffer, absolutely suffer from panic attacks, get scared, you know? And I feel like maybe that's what happened to Elijah. They just had a panic attack. What am I going to do? This woman that's killed all the prophets said, by tomorrow this time, I'll be on Boot Hill with them. I'll be there with them. And I'll die as they've died. Panic attacks are period. Uh, the, 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 I looked it up and it said panic attacks are periods of extreme fear that cause physical symptoms such as erasing heart rate, sweating, 
or trembling. Uh, panic attacks are often accompanied by feeling of an act in, impending threat or harm on you that you think something awful is going to happen, that you're just about to fall apart. Uh, how do you deal with panic? Well, according to the Mayo Clinic on the internet, they said one of the best ways to deal with panic was get plenty of rest. It gets you some rest. So uh, you tie that in with what God done. God let him go to sleep, let him go back to sleep. Finally got him up, running, had to, had to get him up. Amen. Elijah desperately needed to know that God cared for him. Now, that may seem odd for Elijah, this great man of faith, a miracle to have a crisis in his faith. But I think we all make shipwreck of our faith sometimes or another. We believe in that God bring fire down next time. We don't know if we're going to make it. Amen. We think that one moment, and, 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 and by and large, the reason is we hadn't heard from God enough. Somebody hear me tonight. We hadn't heard his voice enough. We hadn't heard him talk to us. I'm telling you, when I left that red light the other day, I knew everything was going to be all right. And I know I'm going to reach my goal and get closer to God than I've ever been before because he told me. Amen. That's all it takes is for God to speak the word. And you know everything's going to be all right. Amen. I just believe that. Praise the Lord. We, re we need to remember when we look at Elijah that he was a man just like us. He experienced God's power and influence, but in the face of the real threat on his life, when pending death uh, was death was pending in his life and waiting on him, he panicked. Amen. I believe that he he, he experienced God's power and influence, but in the face of this threat, Elijah had forgotten all that God had done for him in the past. He was frozen in faithlessness and that threatened. To destroy him. I'm telling you, a lack of faith. The Bible said the just shall live by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if you just can't rally right back and say, devil, somehow I'm going to get through this thing. Somehow that woman ain't going to get me. Amen. God's going to take care of me. And just hold on to that faith. But again, talk is cheap when you're on the mountain. When the valley, when things change, then things change. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. What was causing this crisis of faith for Elijah uh, was, uh, was just a lie that the devil seemingly had convinced him of that God didn't care for him anymore when that was a lie. If God tells you that if the devil tells you God don't care about you, sing him a song. We got someone to care, someone to share all my troubles like no other can do. He'll come down from the sky, dry the tears from my eye because I'm his child. And he cares for us. And that doesn't change when you're in a trial. That doesn't change even if you miss the mark a little bit and you wander off a little bit. The Bible said he's married to the backslider. He's there waiting to take you back in with welcome arms. Malachi's great word in Malachi said, he just simply said, if you'll return unto me, I'll return unto you. Amen. What a promise. Amen. If you come back to me, I'll come back to you. Elijah had gotten to the place, I guess he thought he was indispensable or that God couldn't make it without him. And now all of a sudden, I'm all God's gotten. And God, God needs me, amen. Well, God does need us to do the work he's given us to do. But God doesn't need us in the sense that he can't do the work without us because he can do it without us. We are dispensable. We're not indispensable. Somebody hear me today. Amen. Amen. Uh, God asked Elijah, what are you doing here? Amen. I think that the truth is that he got too far away from hearing from God. I mean, no doubt when he, when he, when, when he did the great miracles, when he went uh, by the brook, when there was no rain, when he went down and let a starving widow sustain him for over a year, Bible scholars say, till the rain came again, till he done all this, surely he had faith in this mighty hand of God. Surely he believed that God would do what he was doing. And so God just comes to him and said, Elijah, what are you doing here? How did you get in this place where you don't even know my boy? You're chasing the wind, you're chasing earthquakes, you're chasing the fire, and I just want to talk to you. Amen? God just wants to talk to you tonight. I believe, I hope you're listening tonight. hope you're texting in and telling you're listening. I'm speaking to somebody tonight. God just telling me to tell you he just wants to talk to you. If you just settle down a minute, the psalmist said, be still and know that I'm God. Amen. That's all you got to do. Just slow down enough. Lay down and take your rest if you need one. 
get back up with your mind on God and say, I'm going to walk out of this valley. I'm going to lift my hand and praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Elijah replied when God asked him what he was doing there. He said, well, the people of Israel, they all forsaken your covenant. They've thrown down your altars. They killed your prophets with the sword. And even I, I only, got to the place he thought it was just him, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. What was Elijah saying? He was saying, I'm the only one you got left. I ain't got nobody. You ain't got nobody but me, God. And it's going to be up to me. And I got a big weight on my shoulders. I need you in my corner. I need you helping me. And he's talking to God pretty much this way. And all of a sudden, God just inter interrupts him. Amen. And said, I want to tell you something, Elijah. I got something to tell you. Listen, I got something to tell you. Amen. He said, I got 7,000 in Israel who have not knit, bowed their knees to Baal. And have not, and, and them whose mouth has never kissed him. Amen. They don't have nothing to do with him. They still believe in me. You're one of 7,000. Just stand up and take your place. You're not the only one in the army of the Lord tonight. You're not the only one facing sickness or death or cancer or heart trouble or financial ruin. You're not the only one that's facing that in this world tonight. And God's got his finger and his hand on every one of us tonight to make sure that we all right. God needed him. Amen. He did need him. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That God didn't have anybody else to rely on. That wasn't the case. And God straightened him out. God set him straight in this word. I've reserved 7,000 in Israel. In other words, Elijah, you're not the only one left. Amen. I got others. I got a backup plan. If you fail me, I got something to, to get through this thing. And I'm not going to fail. And you don't have to fail, Elijah, because I'm with you. But Elijah had forgotten that. He had forgotten who God was, and he'd forgotten who he was. I'm telling you, this is days before he brought fire down from heaven consume the sacrifice and uh, you know uh, when we forget that God is a shepherd and we're the sheep we're in trouble amen we contend to get depressed because we begin to believe that everything depends on us and our lives our family our job our church just wouldn't make it without us well let me tell you now the only thing we can't make it without is Jesus amen right. the only thing we can't make it without is that blood that takes care of us. We just need to listen to his voice tonight. We need to hear this message tonight that I preached to you tonight, that uh, we need to find the voice of God, amen. We need to listen to the right voice, amen. Don't don't go chasing off. A lot of times God's waiting to talk to you at the red light. If you'll just stay there a minute, you gotta wait on the light anyway. Just stand there a minute and wait on God to speak to you. And finally get to the place that Samuel did at a young age when he didn't even know the voice of God. He says, speak, Lord, thy servant, hear thee. All God wants is the permission. You don't have to have it. But he knows he's got your attention. When you look at him and say, talk to me, God, I just need to hear from you tonight. I just need to hear your word. I'll go looking for the wind, the earthquakes, and the fire. But God, if it's your still small voice, I told this at my church many times. Don't know if I've ever told it. Probably have, but I don't remember telling it since I've been streaming. But one night I was real restless and didn't even know what was wrong. I was laying in the bed. Sister Chambers, I think, had already went to sleep, I think, at this time. And I was fearing that I was going to wake her up because I could not find rest. I couldn't buy rest. I couldn't hunt it down. I couldn't find it. I was so, so just restless. And and I was just wrestling. I felt like I was troubled. Didn't even know what I was troubled about. And uh, all of a sudden, God spoke to me with a voice that I hadn't heard like that before either at the time. And he called my name. Don't you know he knows your name tonight? He said, James Chambers, when you wake up in the morning, uh, the devil will still be defeated and I will still be God. Right. And I don't even remember going to sleep. I think when those words just put me to sleep. I think it was just a knockout pill that I needed. I woke up the next morning telling my wife how I finally went to sleep when God just spoke that peace to me. One songwriter said, he whispers sweet peace to me. When I'm cast down and sin sank way down, he whispers sweet peace to me. He can do it for you tonight. 
but our focus is centered on him. When things don't go right, we get overwhelmed. Our faith is centered on ourselves. And that's why the Bible said, David said, when I'm overwhelmed, I get somebody by the hand and say, lead me to the rock beside the nine. If that was been a shelter for me. Don't listen to the devil's lies. Don't listen uh, to the lie that God don't care about you because he does. So God says, hey, Elijah, let me show you something. The Lord passed by and a great strong wind tore the mountains and broke into pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord wasn't in the wind. He said, let me show you something, Elijah, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, the Lord still wasn't in the fire. Amen. Let me show you something. Elijah, and after the fire, sound of a still, small voice. Amen. God just wants us to look up. As I close tonight, let me leave you with this last scripture. Hebrews 12 and 2 tells us what we're to do, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. In my study and looking through commentaries and, and the internet, I saw that scripture, and it was a translation of another translation. It wasn't a King James translation. I didn't even recognize that verse. And I looked at it again, and I said, I got to look at the King James version of that. That ain't helping me. It didn't even make no sense. Because I remember that verse said, looking unto Jesus, who's the author, the beginner, and the ender of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Father, if there be some other way, let this pass from me. But if not, not my will, but your will be done. He endured the cross. He despised the shame. He hated that shame. And he sat down today at the right hand of God, at the throne of God, at the right hand of the throne of God, interceding for you and I. Hallelujah. I feel his presence. Maybe won't you just sing it if you feel like it. That sounds good. I like that song. Amen. You need to listen to God's voice. You need to hear God's voice today. And you need to let God speak to you today as only he can. Uh, some of you tonight need a word from God. And look at me. I don't have it. Other than what I give you already. And Jesus said... There'll be no signs except that of Jonah's to preaching of the gospel. Just speak the word, Lord. Speak the word. Speak the word, Lord. Speak the word, Lord. Say it one time. Well, speak the word, Lord. My heart longs to I can't, I'm, I'm hung up. I can't get 
mad at that. He wants to talk to you. Got a prayer request tonight. He wants to talk to you tonight. Robert Robinson asked for prayer for her great niece. Pray for Susan Mathis. She's watching us from Texas. God's arm is not short. He reads all the way to Texas tonight, says, sister. Amen. Ann Wooten is watching us from Gastonia. Thank you for watching, sister. Jeff and Linda Rand are worshiping with us. I'm so glad. I feel like God's got a word for y'all tonight. You just hold on. Wait for that word. Amen. And I can take part of it tonight. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that no matter what you're facing, it looks like things are falling apart. I still got you in the palm of my hand. I still got you. I still got you. Not only has God got you, God still got this. Amen. God still got what you're going through tonight. Brother and Sister Randall, I believe in God for a miracle for y'all tonight. Cordell from Canada lost a family member this week. Thank God for people reaching that far away. I feel like we're doing something I've never done before. I feel like I'll do this the rest of my life as long as God makes a way. If I get where I ain't able to stand behind the pulpit or ain't able to go to church, I'll find somebody to hook me up the live streaming. I might be dying. Let me just keep on preaching this word because it's important that somebody in Canada would hear me say tonight, God's going to talk to you. God's got a word for you. Every year, ask for prayer for herself. Edith Green's watching, lost her brother last week. God touch you tonight, my sister. Amen. Uh, my wife can tell you how I had her lose your brother. She did last year. We're still not over it. Like a brother to me, too. We're praying for you tonight, Sister Green. Continue to pray for Tom and Gail, Stephen Jewell, and Tracy. Tracy's sister, Tammy. Barbara Robinson, Jennifer Capps, all these are watching tonight. Thank you for watching. God, touch all these tonight. And we hold them before you tonight, God, and ask you one more time. By name, God, that you'll touch them. You'll speak a word to them tonight, Lord. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thank the blood. Thank God. Amen. 747, we're through. Amen. We go back, God. Trust you got to touch tonight. Trust you heard something in the Word of God. It'll help you make it when you're in the valley because you go out of the valley. Every mountain has a valley in front of it and a valley behind it. Every valley has a mountain in front of it and a mountain behind it. So you go out of the valleys, they make up the mountains and they make up the valleys. But God's going to see you through every one of them. Just don't get too bragging in yourself. Just say, God, I need you. I need you every hour. I need you. I need you, oh, I need you every hour. I need you. I come to you, God, because I need you tonight. And come to him. He'll answer your prayer. God bless you. 748, we get ready to open church Sunday. Hope you're going to be there. Hope you listen to TV Saturday night. Hope you call everybody you know and say, Souls Harbor is opening back up Sunday. Feel like they weathered this storm for the second time. And we're ready to go back to worshiping God. Pray that you'll be there. Continue to pray for the church. Continue to support him with your tithes and offering. Continue to pray for your pastor here, Dallas, Portsmouth, for the whole Souls Harbor organization that God will just make us an effective witness to him, that we'll hear from him, and we'll give you what does say the word of God. God bless you. It's a Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, right here on the same stream, and it'll be from church, Lord willing. Hope to see you there. Come be with us if you can. We got plenty of room to keep safe distances and social distance. You can come be with us. You can sit six feet from the next person, I promise you. If you can't, we'll get some chairs and make it possible for you to sit six feet from anybody. If you want to, be there. If you feel good to wear your mask or your, uh, your, your, your uh, shield or your gloves, that feels good to you, just do it. Just come and believe God for a great time in the Lord. God will give it to us Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. Be there. Amen. Good night, everybody. Amen.